Hey everyone! Hi family, friends, and fellow teachers. Uh, my name is Ben, and here I am sitting comfortably in South Korea, right in the middle between China and Japan, here today to talk to you about our special day taking place today. It's Pepperu Day! Hey, what are you doing? Oh, wait, wait, wait! Ah, oh, roll, okay. Uh, what is Pepperu? Well, in Korean, Pepe means something skinny. And in Korea, we place the ro to make to give it a rhythm like pepero. So it's kind of sounds kind of cute with pepero. And it's now two, so it means something skinny. Okay, so go ahead, try to shoot me again. Try to don't hit me, please. Ah, what number? Number three. I saw number three. Oh. Well, how many sticks are there in a package? Oh. Well, Pepperu Day is all about exchanging, buying first, and exchanging these kinds of chocolate-dipped cookies that come in many flavor, variety of flavors. According to the Lotte website, there are approximately between 9 to 11 different flavors with always some special editions coming out from time to time. We buy these and give them to our best friends and people who we appreciate. Go ahead, hit me again. Whoa, okay, number two, let's try this. How do you feel about Pepperu Day? Oh, well, I like Pepperu Day because my students get to give me some pepperus. I also get to have a good feeling about giving pepperus as well to my, uh, to, to my students. Okay, All right, uh, but you know what? How do I feel about it? That's just my feeling. But you know, many people in Korea have kind of a negative view also of Pepperu Day. They think that Pepperu Day is just a marketing stunt or ploy or some marketing angle just to get people to buy a product. So it makes it feel like, makes us feel more obligated that we have to buy and give to someone. Otherwise, if no one gets anything, they're going to feel a little bit depressed. Hmm? How would you feel if you didn't get any Pepperus on Pepperu Day? All right, go ahead and hit me. Wow, hey, good shot, okay. It's close enough. We'll give you the five right there. Do you know how Pepperu started? Okay, well, Pepperu started, it's, it, it happens to be one of those once upon a time stories, more of a rumor. Now, do you know what is South Korea's second largest city? It starts with a B. It rhymes with Busan. Oh, Busan. Oh, yeah, that's right. Busan. Well, Busan is to the south of us, right here in the very tip in South Korea. Now, according to the legend, there were, the, there were these two middle school girls. And they were trying, their goal was to become tall and skinny. They wanted to be thin. So they thought to themselves, they had this little cookie snack that looked like today's pepperoons, only they weren't. They were handmade, they made these uh, handmade, very thin uh, cookie sticks. And they said, we have to eat these on when? November 11th. To achieve maximum results, we have to eat these cookies on November 11th at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. And not only that, down to the 11 seconds of 11, so it's 11, 11, 11, <laughs> right? And that would make them become tall and skinny. Now, I hope it worked for them because it certainly would not have worked for me. Okay, and that's how Pepperu started according to the legend. Okay, well, let's go on with, again, let's try number one. Uh, what is a disadvantage of Pepperu Day? Well, there are advantages. However, a disadvantage of Pepperu Day is that you feel again obligated to have to buy some Pepperus for someone. I can see that uh, as the disadvantage. Let's go to number four. How many, ah, uh, quiz question, I just mentioned it. How many countries celebrate November 11th? Did I mention it? Well, guess. That's right. One, two, three. China, South Korea, and Japan. Very interestingly, China came up with their November 11th called Singles Day. It was made by some university students. They were trying to find a way to get kind of 
hooked up with someone by buying presents and gifts. So this little ploy became a really big thing in China. And today, on November 11th, I kid you not, this is November 11th in China represents the largest, biggest buying of gifts in, in the entire world. Alibaba has recorded billions of dollars in transactions just for today. Okay, now in Japan, uh, November 11th is significant and that's because it was in 1966 that Pocky was made by the Glico or Glico yeah, yeah. Japanese company. Yeah. Now, this is a big point. This is a big, uh, interesting, uh, this is interesting about Korea because many people don't know what came first. Who copied who? I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to be the one uh, to, to tell you this, but Pocky, right, has been around since 1966. Uh, it was these long, thin snacks like these. And, you know, they marketed them, they marketed them as, the snack with a handle. See, it's a handle, right? Oh. Now, what is the difference between Pocky and Pepperoos? Well, that's the thing. The Lotte, Lotte Company is a conglomerate in South Korea, very famous, very similar to Glico in that it produces a variety of different foods. One of my favorites that they produce is the Choco Pie. Us Americans would know it as the Moon Pie. Oh. I miss the moon pies, but again, these are the choco pies that Korea produces here. Now, what is the difference in taste between the Pocky and the Pepperoo? Now, the Japanese Pocky uh, tastes a little bit more bitter, right? Not as sweet. However, if you're looking for sweet, then the Pepperoos are your choice. And with different variety of flavors, you, you can't go wrong. Everyone has their favorite. Mine happens to be almond flavor, green box. Okay, so that's how Pepperoo Day started. Uh, now, so three countries celebrate, again, November 11th uh, in its history. Now, the thing about it is that we do have all kinds of festivals and, well, kind of games in a way. They have this kind of a share a kiss, Pepperoo kiss. Uh, the, idea, the idea is to see who can uh, kiss and bite the most, be, get the shortest amount of the pepperu possible. <laughs> and that's one of the games played at the universities there. And uh, if, for those of you who have a lot of money, well, it just so happens that this is actually one of the best gifts. I mean, would you rather get a pepperu box or a box or an empty box full of uh, rolled up bills like this? Wow, they're rolled up very nicely. Uh, and that's a kind of a common gift actually given by uncles and aunts to you know the, the nephews or nieces in Korea. Now it happens that November 11th in Korea also happens to celebrate, people eat this right there. This is what we call the garatok right here. Now the garatok is a rice cake. Uh, it's a cylinder in shape. And it, it kind of sometimes has a bland flavor. It's very chewy. Uh, and, and, I, and, and I can see why that it would be eaten uh, today because of its, of its cylinder shape and its uh, long and, and uh, thin side, okay? All right, now again, there is, however, there is, however, a little dark side that many people are not aware of about Japan's Glico. Now, when I went to, now, if, if you go to Japan, you will see the mascot right here of the Glico, the running man, the famous mascot or the brand of the, of the, of the Glico company. Now, part of, uh, part of that dark history was something that happened back in 1984. And I'll guide you to the computer here. My computer shows you some pictures here. This was the man known as the man with 21 faces. He, he's a phantom because he was never caught. In 1984, a couple of people kidnapped the Glico president and they demanded a ransom of $4 million. He, however, managed to escape his captors. 
Well, it turned out that this man of 21 faces threatened the company and said that they would poison many of the glycos food products like Pocky. Surveillance cameras in Japan caught a man who didn't belong to the store, was distributing and putting on the shelves Pocky products and, and other products that Glico makes of foods. As a result of this, the police in Japan had to, uh, the government had to take down, had to take away uh, all the food products from Glico off the shelves. This cost the Glico company $20 million and laid off over 400 workers, right? All right, honey. We'll, we'll, and we're almost done, little baby. I was just telling everyone about the... Okay, so I'm almost, I'm almost done, guys. Uh, I was just telling everyone about the dark story about uh, what happened at Glico with the kidnappings and the uh, food products being taken off the shelves. Well, that's it for me today uh, as far as Pepper Room Day. Now, as far as materials and micro teachings, because I am a TESOL instructor, let me guide you to the materials that I have in, on hand here. Okay, so let's talk about the micro teaching. This, is a, this would serve as a speaking micro teaching. We have a vocabulary word matching as a pre-activity. And as a good main activity, we would do a plus minus or advantages and disadvantages of Pepperu Day. All right, working in groups and partners, we can come up with a nice discussion during a main activity preparation on what they see as an advantage or disadvantage of Pepperu Day. Now, a good post activity, a good post activity would be something like this, you know, where now we give the students the opportunity to reflect and design their own Pepperu box with their own brand. Okay, um, now an, an SOS activity, if to maximize on the student's time in the class, we do have to have an emergency activity. Uh, and an emergency activity would look something like this. I have the matching card sets of the different boxes, flavors of Pepperu's, as well as the names. So it, we would do a nice little memory match uh, with these cards right there. And of course, the lesson plan on the teaching technique. Now the teaching technique, demonstrations and instructions, the lesson plan is very valuable if for those of you who are doing a TESOL or will do the TESOL or even plan to go and do a CELTA course, uh, I can see where you will need this. The lesson plan by itself is valuable as well as how you plan a micro teaching. How do you run the micro teaching? You have to look at the lesson plan to get the idea on how to run the activity using instructions and demonstrations uh, and including all the teacher talk that I document on the lesson plan as well as commentary as for you to understand why we do this technique and why it will be expected of you to do this technique. Save yourself a lot of time reading books on TESOL when I can give you right here the direct way on how to write a micro teaching for TESOL or CELTA. All right, again, the price for everything will be included on my video, on my, uh, on my comments and how to order. In the meantime, guys, I hope you have enjoyed Pepperu Day as much as I have. All right, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, have a blessed day. See you. Bye. <laughs>